Kia ora, good evening, I'm Waitangi Kōpū, she's Anna Wilcox, and tonight on The Crowd Goes Wild, we found a Waitangi who makes me want to double my protein intake. Kane Williamson is like a fine wine, not the cheap kind at the company office Christmas party. Who is the superior Kiwi woman in the Big Bash? I will tell you. And up the arse and all. Champs League soccer football for your Thursday. All that plus we meet the CKB fighter with the best nickname in the game. But first. The big juicy news story at the top of the show. Leading your CUW tonight, we sent some absolute punishers down to the fine city of Christchurch. Hello, Moles. Hello, Brooke. I'm obviously talking about the breakers who are about to punish Adelaide, but tell me how they're going to do it. Well, you know, last time I did one of these live crosses, it was uh, it was an absolute... We nailed it. No, well, you nailed it because you didn't get to talk because I did all the talking. So, Brooke, please answer a wise question. How are they going to win this one? The whole team needs to be a part of this bad boy. They've got a couple guys who can fill it up and they can score at any given moment with Jackson Parker, Cartwright and Anthony Lamb as well. So if those two get going, everyone else needs to jump on board. I don't know if Finn Delaney's right behind me. No, he's not. He's gone. Finn Delaney is probably the one for me who really needs to step up. Mills, what you got? Well, Mango, Man Mithang there... Oh, and, yeah, pick the guys on screen. That guy on screen, he is supposed to be the defensive centre. He's going to have his hands full with Isaac Humphreys. Casey's got stats. I'm not going to steal Casey Frank's stats off him, but Isaac Humphreys Do gets it. a lot of his buckets off cuts. 20% of his offence comes off just moving off the ball. Like we, Casey's going to drop that in the broadcast. I don't know if you're going to watch the broadcast. But I suggest you do it. Watch it. He had uh, 17 and 12 last time they played as well, so he was a huge, huge part of this team. So Trenton Flowers is the other one for me. I'm a big fan of him because he's the next up and coming. He's probably going to be in the NBA. No, he is going to be in the NBA next year, but he's finding his place in this Adelaide 36ers team as well. So Breakers need to slow him down, but we would love to see him get out in transition in just a couple of. That was a dunk. That was. Uh, that was what I was. Oh, oh we should have had some. He is honestly have hobbling no today. Idea. They've had some bad luck, obviously, with injuries and stuff like that, and they can't get any replacements. So how important are players like Anthony Lamb in situations like this? So important. Like, he's, he's getting a lot of his points through spot-ups. He's getting a lot, of, a lot of his points pulling up and then just backing people down. So it's a lot of ISO stuff without Will McDowell-White to actually try and get things going. So without him in the offence... It's a lot of one-on-one -on -one play, and we saw that against the Illawarra Hawks, where they only managed to score 65 points. And that, if nothing else, that Chris Beard, he looks great on screen as well, yeah. so pass him the ball. I think they should go through him a little bit more as well, though. ISO play, running through pick and rolls. If they double-team, he can get it out of there as well, but in the post, he's big, he's strong. He needs to be the guy for me tonight to get going and have 30, 35 points tonight for them to win. First of all, fellas, uh, very, very professional. I love it. Um, it's way better than last time we crossed you. Um, last time there was 5,000 people who turned up to cheer the breakers on. How's the crowd looking down there today? Yeah, it looks great. Thanks, Why. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the game's been starting for another half an hour. I mean, Christchurch, well, they'll bring it, right? Absolutely, I love Christchurch. Christchurch is a great city. I love the fact that when dudes walk in, they look at you, it looks like they're going to start a fight. <laughs> well, you look like you suit Christchurch, mate, so um, don't give it too much credit. Wow. <laughs> wow. You take that I'm back out of Wilcox. move here. You take wow. that back out of Wilcox. I've been here for 25 you minutes and I'm loving it. He wants to move I want to move this. It's nice. I like Christchurch. That's why I'm falling in love with the place. Yeah. He's going to stay here. He's like cancelled his flight and everything. It's crazy. He's, he's left his family for Christchurch. I was about to say go to the Crusaders. I can't do it. But I, I'm almost there. Nah, 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 don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. That's, that's what we're leaving. All right, we'll leave now. We've mentioned the, the, the Crusaders. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Time to go. Good luck, boys. Thanks, Riga. Thanks, Storm. <laughs> You're welcome. Hey. Days of the punishers. Shut up. Right. Just call me Storm. As the punishers, yeah, right. I've got to be a lot higher, taller. Well, while we don't have the traditional snowy white Christmas, what we've got is much better. The black caps in test whites. My ideal white Christmas and Santa Claus came early. Ah. <laughs> well, Santa wasn't playing and neither was the short leg fielder after this. Not on the shorter side. Oh, that uh, struck him. Yeah, the boot, uh, the, the, the toe, uh, that can be really painful. In agony. Yeah, funny enough, if he had a short leg, he might have missed him. He was stretched off while Kane got stuck <laughs> in, showing the same Kiwi ingenuity as this fan. He that. worked his way towards another ton. But before that... Keeps on finding the... Keeps on hurting him. Bangladesh are not letting Williamson get this hundred. 
Now, mm, no matter how many limbs they threw in the way, they couldn't stop Kane. Kane Williamson, 29th Test 100 overall, is 400 in the last five Test innings for Kane Williamson. What a player. And though he looks small next to Jameson, <laughs> his ego is even smaller. Oh, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, humbling, but, you know, at the same time, the, the focus is always, uh, you know, it's about the team and trying to, uh, trying to help get them in the best position possible. And but Ronke must be a fan of Winnie because he's not opposed to blow smoke uh, Kane's way. Well, like you said, he scored 29 of them now, so, I mean... You just see all around the world, he, he's amazing. To be able to do it the way he does and, and the calmness he shows in, in situations is, is awesome. Did get done by a new ball. Day three is starting, we're all up for 317. Epic. Massive. Yeah, I know, huge. Yeah, huge. I suppose that's the talking point. I mean, we're, we're, we're barely holding on, but, uh, but yes, huge talking point for Kane Williamson. Huge. 19 for O? Is 19, that what I've heard? Is that the... 19 for zero. Zero. Yes, no wickets. <laughs> no wickets. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, he's now equal to Virat Kohli um, on test entries, which is pretty amazing. And, like, 16th overall in, like, the list. Yeah. Equal to a guy called Don Bradman. I don't know cricket. Don Bradman. Don I know. All right. Dom. Don't hate me, all right? The, the, oh, I didn't... The, um, also, also, just imagine... I mean, you know, if, imagine if we played as many test cricket as much test cricket yeah. as, say, England, India, and even Australia, yeah. you know, potentially he could be leading that list. Yeah, oh, 100%. Person. Yeah, for sure. Like 16th on the list. Um, I forgot what the, yeah, the numbers were, but it's like he can get there 100%. He's only like 33. Mm. Young. Like it. Yeah. Right, speaking from experience, they've bred him very tough on the Waikato. And if you've been on the social media interweb this week, you might have seen a feat of superhuman strength by Wahine Toa. She is CGW's new favourite athlete, so we sent our new favourite reporter, Irina, oh, yeah. Irina McKayde, uh, down to get the scoop. Boom, baby, finally got the call up. Waikato's finest. Let's go check out some strong ass people. Let's go. You can jump up on there. You can just stand up there if you want. Yeah, don't show her toes. How's that feel up there? I finally feel tall for once. <laughs> Tell us about what you've been doing. On Saturday, I broke the all-time equipped bench record and I became the first female in the world to bench 300 kgs. Not 300 kgs. Come on, tell them what it is. 300. Oh, 317.5 kgs. 700 pounds. My bad. <laughs> and our mate Ash ain't no one trick pony either. She does everything. Yeah, she's some gymnastics. She um, dominated that and then she's arm wrestling, dominated that. Why she was powerlifting. But does she carry a pole around here sometimes too? Oh my God, yeah, she's done pole dancing too. Give her the bloody Supreme Halberg for Becky's sakes. It's great for your core, right? Yeah, yeah, I actually taught her everything she knows, yeah. And what makes all of this so impressive is what she's overcome to do it. In March of 2020, I suffered a stroke. It was a week before lockdown. And then during the lockdown, I just used every single day to rehabilitate the left side of my entire body. And now she's one of the strongest people on the planet. But Coach reckons she's got a few kgs left in her. Well, where's she going from here? Oh, I want 400. You want 400? Yeah. All right, well, before she can slay her next milestone, she's got to take me down in an arm whistle. And to get ready, I had to try out the Coach Rob Rack Us Up routine. now. Take your eyes, take your eyes. You ready? Come on, are you ready? Come on, get it. Let me win for TV! Let me win for TV! Oh man! <laughs> Alright, that wraps up our first gig. Eden McCarty, crowd goes wild. Oh my gosh, she is wow. a beast! Wow. She is amazing! 317. Yeah. What's your PB? Oh, like when, Say I, it. when, when I played football, like 140. Oh wow, okay. Yeah. But, but yeah, that's that is insane. Three hundred and seventeen. It's crazy, honestly. I I, can't, I I don't think I could be able to get the the bar off the rack. Yeah. Three hundred and seventeen. I was looking at things that are that equivalent in weight and like a touring motorcycle. You know, one of those ones that you see your aunt and uncle touring mm. around with. That's yeah. that's three hundred kgs or three hundred fifty kgs or something like that. That's insane. And she can backflip. Yes, she's so nimble too. Great. Holy hecka. Oh, yeah. So to come. 
More cricket. Woo! Tim gets toesed up. And McConey tells us who blasted the bleeding entryway off. Practice race, how was it, and who won in that race? Whoever won can probably answer that question. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Sir Ben Ainsley. Pass the mic to Pete Burling because Team New Zealand cleaned up in practice racing in Jeddah today. Certainly sailing the boat well, and Emirates Team New Zealand uh, storming to a win in fleet race number two, a practice race, mind you. It all starts tomorrow. The little big show I have such mixed start. feelings about this, right? Because obviously I'm passionate about the America's Cup, but I'm annoyed that it's in Saudi right now, that they've taken it to, A, away from New Zealand, it should really be here, and then that there's an event in Saudi, because we obviously know the sort of, like, issues around that, human rights and basic stuff. Um, and, yeah, it's just, like, frustrating. And then it's also confusing with... Um, but anyway, I'll pause there and just say that the racing starts tomorrow. So, um, and the actual Zealand. America's Cup starts tomorrow? No, it's like a preliminary regatta. Ah. Um, it's in Barcelona next year, but Team New Zealand are killing it. So, in, practice, in cap practice racing. So, um, hopefully. I was say, how do I miss this? Why are we I practice know. racing so far out? Anyway. Because it's not here in New Zealand. Yeah. Annoying. Sorry. Frustrating, isn't Frustrating. it? Frustrating. Right, City Kickboxing has a reputation of turning humble men into deadly weapons. The latest being Māori Far North fighter Aaron Toe. He's so dangerous that nobody wants to fight him. Tim Provice was brave enough to interview him, though. I've heard it's really hard to get into city kickboxing, so I came here to see Aaron Toe and see how he got in. How did you get in now? I think Dan brought me here just to give me a hiding one time, and I kind of didn't leave. At that point in your life, did you need a good hiding, brother? <laughs> I needed a few, I needed a few, yeah, yeah, for sure. Aaron Toe has been staying true to his nickname, Toes and Everybody Up, on his path in the last few years. But it does come with some drawbacks. Is that hard? To find someone that's ready to get those hands? It's definitely difficult to get a fight because obviously 7-0, uh, if you include my boxing and kickboxing, it's probably up in the 15 to 20. Man, I wouldn't want to fight the bro either. He's got the record of a warrior and a mata ora to match. How long have you had it for? Oh, I've had my mata ora since March this year. Um, I've been trying to get it for like probably a good five years. I felt because where I'm going and what I envisioned for myself and my whanau and the way that my whanau brought me up, um, I wanted to give, a, give back in some way that was undeniable, you know. Mm. My grandmother told me a story when I was young that when you're a child, they'll take you to each realm. Mine is just uh, to my towinga. Mm. To my towinga is where, where I spend most of my time. And um, to be able to wear this as a, as a Māori warrior, then what more can you ask for, you know? And uh, from one Māori warrior to another, you teach me how to do kicks, bro. Yeah, yeah. I sure. just want one kick, bro. If anybody misses with me, bro, I can hit them with a You walk up, please. No, don't. And straight in the rocks, you know? Straight up in the rocks. Straight up in the rocks. Yeah. Stay, stay, stay. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty hard, eh? Bro, you didn't warn me about that, bro. Oh, you, when you did with, it. I didn't kick it with my foot. What did you kick it with? My shin. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for, thanks for that. Call to provide Toku Ingoa. Crowd goes wild. <laughs> oh, that would hurt. What, what, do you know what toes up means? <laughs> nah. Toes up. How, what, do you, what, do you, what would you imagine? I don't know. I don't know. Well, it's when your toes are facing up, it's because you've been knocked Oh, out. really? Yeah, toes are up. Oh, OK, cool. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was going to be weirder than that. That's why. Oh, it nice. Perfectly. Dangerous. Yeah. Yeah, nice. All right, we've got more cricket here. Uh, tu Wahini from Tower went head-to-head -head last night in the Women's Big Bash Challenger final. They also happen to be our best female cricketers, but we reckon it's cooler that they're both Tower College alumni. Mili Kerr and the Brisbane Heat hit the whacker to take on Sophie Devine's Scorchers, and it was Mealy with the hot start. Shots. Beautifully played. Amelia Kerr with a textbook straight drive for four. And when it came to the actual matchup, well, you decide who wins. Edge found, rope found. Well, I don't know if that's 1-0, Mealy Kerr, 1-0, Sophie Devine there, no slip in place and thick edge, and just the wry smile from Mealy Kerr. Amelia Kurt. Worked fine and away for four. Harris couldn't stop it at fine leg. Mealy slapped 31 in the heat's innings before being dropped and caught by the same bucket player in back to back balls. Helped on its way, cries of catch and coming around. Edgar claims this one. In her team's chase, Devine went out in similar not-so-Divine fashion, finishing with just 13 from 8. Mealy and the Heat getting the smoking win, scorching the Scorchers by 67 runs. 
Nice. They say no farms, no food. Around here, we also say no farmers, no football. That's how much the beautiful game is propped up by our people who work the land. And tonight, our humble offering is the UEFA Champions League from London to Madrid to Turkey to the land of Salt Bay. Here's our Salt and Pepper Bay, Nikoni. Oh, thanks. We begin with a commentator with a religious foot fetish. Jesus, great feet, 2 0. I've never really admired the feet of Jesus, but all right, I get it. And check out the foot of Saka. Whoa, get in. Arsenal demoed Lance from France. The Gunners win 6 0 and are through to the next round of the Champions League with their beautiful feet. Up the arse. Meanwhile in Madrid. And Rodrigo. Oh. Oh, indeed. Rodrigo with a scorcher for Real against Napoli. Then it was Jude Bellingham from Birmingham. And Bellingham, he's done it again. Hey, Jude, don't be afraid. Let's make a great run and score a header. He wears number five, the same as Zidane, and he's been spectacular. And the commentators were frothing. Standing on the edge with his arms outstretched. Here we can see in all its glory. Everybody wanted him. Everybody, though? Finally in Istanbul, once Constantinople. Bruno Fernandes, Anthony calls for it right. Bruno Fernandes! Oh, that's magnificent! Bloody Bruno blew the bloody doors off and gave Man U a 2-0 lead over Galatasaray. But the home side came storming back. Nicely taken! Oh, what a goal! Kerem Ektogolu! Say what now? Kerem Ektogolu! Yeah, I thought you said that. And what a goal from him. Skyrocket in flight, it's Turkish delight. Final score, 3-3. Man U fans will be salty. The Red Devils may seem cooked, but it's not the last dance. They just need to win their final group game against Bayern Munich and hope that Galatasaray draws with Copenhagen. There's the rub. James McConey, crowd goes wild. I don't care about football now that Sweden are out of the Euros. Um, but if you do care, the EPL is getting pretty exciting at the top. Arsenal. I don't Man care. City no, here, to be honest. <laughs> right, so to come on the show like a lot of Sky Sports staff after the Christmas party last night, the Phoenix are rising from the ashes. Alice Robinson keeps raising the bar on the slopes. And LeBron and AD are good at basketball. <laughs> Yo, when did bowls get cool? The lads have got red tails, mullets, earrings. Shout out to Adam and Lee bringing swag into the Twilight Bowls comp. Roll out, roll out, roll out, roll out, roll out, roll out, roll out. I love that the sponsor oh, yeah, banners are like they're sponsored by Retirement Village. <laughs> After getting spanked by the 76ers on Tuesday, resulting in a career-worst loss for LeBron, the Lakers really turned things around. Well, more specifically, they turned the Pistons around and did their very own spanking. It helps when you have D'Angelo Russell on your team, though. Russell over Isaiah Stewart, flashes it down. Man, has he got it going. As does LeBron James and Anthony Davis. Quickly to the rim. Running glass or no, follow up off the high glass, no, but slam back by Anthony Davis. Cade Cunningham did come to the party for the Pistons, though. Cade will fire and fill it. D'Angelo Russell, LeBron's pass taken away by Cade. He will drive it and lay it up. Jammed it before Anthony Davis could get to it. Because I need to make room for all of this. A pass picked off by D'Angelo Russell. Remember what I said about casual passes, George? You just can't afford them. Russell for three. Marcus Sasser with a no look to Stanley Amude. Missed the shot. Davis Anthony Davis ahead to LeBron for another jam. He's got three dunks in this game. Outside to D'Angelo Russell. He'll stop and fire and fill it. 
He knows every shot he's taken is going in. Lakers win by 26 points, 133 to 107. I don't know if this is trolling or not, but I heard yesterday that that worst loss in LeBron's history, history 44 yeah. points, he was exactly the same age as Michael Jordan. Same, like, same age, like, say, to the day. Yeah. Oh, wow, I don't know. 313 days or something like that. Yeah, crazy. But it was bittersweet because that same game. Yeah, it could be lying to me. It's lied to me before. Got... Right here at the top of the A-League table, Wellington Phoenix is heading to Mars this weekend to take on bottom of the table, Western United. Mars Stadium, that is. That's in Ballarat. Which is pretty much out of space anyway. Phoenix young gun Lucas Kelly Hield is ready for another one. Kelly isn't his middle name, by the way. He has a hyphenated last name. We sports reporters hate hyphenated last names. What's your middle name, Lucas? Uh, my middle name is Eric, yes. Eric, cool. Lucas Eric is two metres tall and he's only bloody 18. The young giant has started all five games in his debut season for the Phoenix. I definitely feel more confident um, amongst the group and amongst the league, I think. Uh, it's a bit of a step up from previous, but um, I think I'm adapting to it pretty well. Yeah, the defender hasn't looked out of place in all the big boys' league and reckons that's all to do with manager Giancarlo Italiano's Whitney Houston belief system. I believe the children are our future. I think he definitely has a lot of trust in the young boys. I mean, we get a lot of reserve players coming through in training as well and doing a, doing a great job um, in training. And I think he, that shows that he has trust in all the young players coming through. Kickoff is at the not so child friendly time of 8 pm on Saturday. Um, shout out to Chloe Knott as well. We feel for her as well. She, she just had to pull out of the A League women's team because they don't get paid enough. And so, yeah, she has yeah, to go work a job. Statistically, though, if you're a female in New Zealand, um, we're working for free for the rest of the year. So, um, do you really? feel sorry for us too? Is that right? Yeah, I might just leave. I'd knock off now if I was. Yeah, yeah I might yeah. knock off. You're done. Yeah. <laughs> now, this next bit is about skiing, so I'm going to say. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> well, we're down under aloe vering our first sunburns of the summer and preparing our toes for months of Jan or wearing. Our winter athletes are getting podiums in the cold north. They are. One of those athletes um, being Alice Robinson, who beat the GOAT, Michaela Schifron, last weekend and claimed her first World Cup podium since 2021. John Alice. Yes. But the surprise of the day with a brilliant performance on the first run was New Zealand's Alice Robinson. <laughs> It's been a minute since we've heard a squeal like that from Alice Robinson. But it was worth the wait. She absolutely killed it at the Killington World Cup with a second place finish. After my first run, I came down the lead. I was not expecting it. I was like, oh, OK. I'd like never led a first round at a World Cup before. So I was like, whoa. Like normally if I, when I've had, you know, one race as it's been because I've had a really good second run. And when you lead from the first run, it means you drop last for the second. A first ever for Alice. A bit strange being at the start and being the last one to go. But uh, I was really happy with how I handled it because like, uh, even though I was leading the first run, it was so close. It was like 0.25 to sixth place or something. So it could have gone, like I could have, you know, come down sixth or seventh or come out or push too hard and crash so to come down and still be on the, in second on the podium was a really really good result so i was quite happy with how i handled the pressure and obviously night always nice to beat world number one michaela Schifron. obviously she's mm -hmm. got such a huge name to herself and she was chasing her like 90th uh, world cup win or something crazy yeah. so that must have felt good to be um on the tier above her on the on the podium <laughs> yeah no for sure i mean whenever you beat the greatest full time it's always quite a good feeling <laughs> <laughs> the G-forces that Alice's body takes on in a race is pretty intense. So unlike many of you Kiwi blokes, she never skips a leg day. I work out. <laughs> no, we do definitely more legs, but I mean, you always want to be kind of balanced and you want to do a bit of shoulders to protect from like injuries and stuff. But I definitely a bit more of a legs, not skipping leg day kind of person. <laughs> and if you're wondering how much she's back squatting at the moment. I think a PB recently is probably like 135. <laughs> not bad, Alice. Not bad. Anna Wilcox, crowd goes wild. Oh, that's amazing. World Cup podium for like that type of skiing is just insane. And also Ruby Andrews slope style um, got a podium last weekend as well. So killing it. Sure, ladies. Wickets. Got a black cap. They got a wicket. Black cap. Got a wicket. Got a wicket. Yeah.